What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of the 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below, the best gaming related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's get into it. We've been talking a lot at this point, guys, about Killzone and the future of this franchise, but I want to talk about everything that we know so far about the next potential installment in the Killzone franchise, which I've been calling Killzone 4, guys, but just for the sake of, since obviously the number of games that have come out at this point are already four, we'll say that this is Killzone 5 and everything that we know so far about Killzone 5 for the sake of the video. So let's talk about it. So guys, We've talked on a number of occasions about Killzone, so, you know, you guys can check out all of my Killzone content on the YouTube channel right now, but what we'll go through quickly here is the release timeline. So we had Killzone, the number one, in 2004, you had Liberation in 2006, 2009 is when you had your next addition to the franchise or main entry in the series, Killzone 2, a couple years after that, Killzone 3 in 2011, and then Mercenary and Shadowfall, which is technically, uh... Killzone 4 that came out in 2013, so a couple years after Killzone 3. We haven't seen a continuation of this franchise up to this point, guys, and we're in 2020 now. So where could this game be? And what's pretty much all of the different things that we know so far about the game? So this is an article, guys, that was written by uh, Sarmad uh, Lilla of Segment Next. Killzone is one of the best shooters around, but we haven't seen an installment since Killzone Shadowfall. The game released alongside PlayStation 4 during its launch month. Killzone Shadowfall, while not really a major hit for Sony, still managed a garner critical and commercial success. The series has since been on the ice for close to five years. However, the series needs to make a comeback, and there couldn't be a better time. Killzone Shadowfall developer Guerrilla Games released uh, Horizon Zero Dawn on PlayStation 4, and now when we are on the verge of PlayStation 5's arrival, it feels like now is the best time for Killzone Shadowfall's return, or of course Killzone 5. While some may think Guerrilla Games is working on Horizon Zero Dawn 2, there is more going on at the studio that, than meets the eye. It is an open secret that Killzone Creator is currently busy with the next Horizon Zero Dawn game. There is something else going on behind the scenes as well. Rumor has it that Sony is working on a new Killzone game with former Rainbow Six Siege development talent. The next Killzone game is being developed by Chris Lee, who was once a part of Rainbow Six Siege's multiplayer team. So look guys... These things, obviously, it's not confirmed yet. Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is not confirmed, and neither is Killzone 5. However, the signs, there's, there's some signs showing us that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is definitely what they're working on. I think they're definitely working on Horizon Zero Dawn 2, but they might be working on Killzone 5 at the same time. They might be working on a couple of projects here, guys, instead of just one at this point. It's really hard to say. We're going to have to wait for official announcements, but it does. it is very interesting that they're picking up people from the Rainbow Six Siege multiplayer team. They are, of course, uh, you know, other developers who used to work on the Killzone franchise are coming back, which is kind of leading us to some very, it's very interesting to say the least. It doesn't, obviously, not all meets the eye with Guerrilla Games, and I would be, I would actually be kind of surprised if they announced that they're working on both titles. Just because, I mean, you know, obviously Guerrilla Games is growing, but usually these development teams are working on one project at a time, and uh, if that's changing, uh, that'd be interesting. But I will say that Killzone 5 on the Decima engine, guys, that might be something special. There's no news regarding the upcoming game, but it isn't far-fetched to think it is developed on Decima engine. The game engine has been used for Death Stranding, as well as Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a powerful, capable engine that can handle amazing levels of details and complex gameplay. Killzone Multiplayer seems to be a focus for Sony, since they have hired an expert, someone who did an amazing job on Rainbow Six Siege. And, you know, the other thing here is, uh, here, guys, is we've got a... Not only are, is Sony looking at this probably from a perspective of a multiplayer component, because there's been rumor that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 was going to have multiplayer, which I think would be great for the franchise, but maybe they want to have specific multiplayer components to Horizon Zero Dawn uh, or uh, to Killzone 5. And Horizon Zero Dawn 2, maybe that's going to just be a single player, uh, you know, exclusive, right? 
that's just going to have a single player experience and that's pretty much it maybe some co-op stuff but it sounds like maybe just maybe Killzone 5 is being worked on but it's going to be just a multiplayer experience or it's may, might be a story but it's all but it's mainly a multiplayer experience which might be very interesting in today's market as a first person shooter i think that guys i i love the package deals and i've said this on a number of occasions but is it possible that they're working on a single player experience for Horizon Zero Dawn 2 right now and at the same time a multiplayer component specific for Killzone 5? We'll kind of have to wait and see guys. If that were the case and they weren't going to do a story or co-op modes with Killzone 5, I think they might just reboot Killzone uh, or do a soft reboot so to speak and that would be something that I would definitely be interested to see if they actually, you know, if they actually would do that. If at the end of the day, guys, it comes down to, we're either going to get a, a Killzone 5 with just a multiplayer experience or no Killzone 5 at all, I'll take the Killzone 5 with a multiplayer experience. In an article, guys, that was written by Emily Clark of Segment Next, Guerrilla Games, the studio behind hit video games like Killzone and Horizon Zero Dawn, has posted a new job listing to work on an unannounced title possibly a new multiplayer kill zone. You might be thinking the unannounced game could be anything, but upon further inspection of the listing, you'll find that they are specifically looking for someone who has expertise in systems like matchmaking, tournaments, clans, and leaderboards. Now look guys, when you look at that, obviously it sounds like, oh yeah, this very well might be kill zone. However, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 very well may have matchmaking, you know, and so that's something you also have to look at is maybe they're thinking about doing you know, a multiplayer experience for Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Tournaments, clans, leaderboards, I can see clans, but leaderboards and, and, and tournaments, I don't, I can't really see that with Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Uh, but maybe, just maybe. Furthermore, the listing uh, links to more information on the server technology for one of Guerrilla Games' uh, previous titles, Killzone Shadowfall. The whole listing is definitely worth the read. Uh, and the most interesting section of the listing is the what you'll do part. You will build a robust backend that can scale up to serve many concurrent users. You will work on systems like matchmaking, tournaments, clans, and leaderboards. You will cooperate with game designers to achieve the vision for the game. You will work on systems to, to test and deploy a new server set without downtime. That sounds like, to me, that sounds like... They are really going to work. They're working specifically on something here, at least with this job listing. They are working on a multiplayer component heavily. One thing that really uh, is, is interesting to me is you will build a robust backend that can scale up to serve many concurrent users. Now, that can mean a couple of things, guys, but that almost sounds like they're working on maybe, you know, one map, lots of people on one map, like a battle royale, maybe a battle royale, or just obviously having multiple servers that are going to be having a lot of different game modes, which also I think would be really great. I'd like Killzone to come out with like a fully, you know, loaded different kinds of game modes within their multiplayer. A uh, battle royale somewhere down the road, I'd be totally down to see what that would look like with Killzone. But that it kind of sounds to me that this very well might be a Killzone Five, guys. Uh, there's there might be a there might be a chance. And if you're a big Killzone fan like myself, this is definitely giving you some hope. But none of this has been 100 percent confirmed as of we're getting a Killzone 5 or we're getting a Horizon Zero Dawn 2. I think everyone knows that we're definitely going to be getting a Horizon Zero Dawn 2. The big question has been, will we see a Killzone 5? The listing mentions several networking terms that hint at the game being multiplayer. Combine that with them linking to Killzone Shadowfall and one of the logical conclusions that come up is that Gorilla is working on a new multiplayer kill zone game. A new kill zone game has been long overdue. The series was the front and center of PlayStation games ever since the very first game released back in 2004 for the PS2. The last entry was Shadowfall back in 2013 for PlayStation 4. Everything has gone cold since then. There are also chances that the next kill zone game could be in development for the PlayStation 5. And guys, look, I've said this on multiple occasions. Kill zone 1 to 3 were incredible in my opinion. I thought that like they were kind of on track if they would have just kept making these you know uh these great you know kill zone games it could have competed against some of the other big juggernauts in the F fps genre the thing about it is is that kill zone is an exclusive to playstation with kind which kind of obviously hurts it or it kind of keeps it you know just on the playstation it's not something that you know everyone can play like on xbox and such uh, but 
That being said, Shadowfall was definitely, in my opinion, even though I thought the graphics were great, I thought that some of the multiplayer components were great as well, the story, to me, wasn't as as strong as the, the first three, and so it was a little bit of a of a fall, no pun intended, in my opinion, with Shadowfall, but a Killzone 5 multiplayer components, and it's just multiplayer, and that's all they're focused on, they could make a pretty special multiplayer experience, in my opinion. Earlier this year, several rumors pointed towards Sony working on a new Killzone game with former Rainbow Six Siege multiplayer development team member Chris Lee. Other rumors said that the new Killzone game is being developed on Decima Engine, the same game engine used for Death Stranding, as well as Horizon Zero Dawn, another game from Guerrilla. And so, if it's on Decima Engine, that's the other thing, guys, is that this could be something really special, like graphically on the PlayStation 5. If it was like a, a PlayStation 5 uh, exclusive, or imagine if it's a, imagine if it comes out on the PS5, but it's free to play. How huge could Killzone be at that point? Guys, Killzone 5 is definitely something that I think a lot of people in the community want. I know a lot of people, at least in the Killzone community, absolutely want a continuation of this franchise, and I do as well. And really at this point, we know that from the things that we kind of know, um, that being like all of these job listings and things of that nature, there's definitely hope here. We don't know for sure, but this there is some hope here without a doubt and this is pretty much everything that we know so far about Killzone 5 I want to hear from all of you guys what do you guys think about the idea of a Killzone 5 let me know in the comment section below what would you guys want to see in this game would you only want a multiplayer component would you want a full package like I always like or would you like them just to work on mainly a multiplayer component to make it just a really great experience on multiplayer let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and for more Killzone 5 content in videos stay here with zero tv the division franchise has actually really grown over time now guys this is becoming kind of a, a fan favorite for a lot of people who are fans of ubisoft and a lot of their ips this is a franchise that's starting to really grow in popularity and it really started with the first division and it moved into the division two now the question is guys it's pretty premature but I think it's something that we should definitely discuss and at least get a conversation going, is will we see a Division 3? So the Division 3, guys, a game that you kind of wonder, are they going to round out the trilogy? I mean, are they going to go way beyond three games? You would think with the success they're having at this current time, why wouldn't they make a Division 3? Because Warlords of New York, that actually came out, guys, not too long ago. I mean, we're talking, this was a, an expansion of the game that, that came out pretty much in March 3rd of, of this year, and a lot of people enjoy it. You know, it's got kind of like those mixed reviews, um, but I would say it's probably a little bit above average reviews for Warlords of New York, and there's a number of people that really enjoy it. And then, of course, guys, as far as the reception is concerned for The Division 2 as a whole, it got, you know, pretty much 80s out of 100, which is pretty good. Some uh, different, uh, you know, review reviewers actually gave it even higher than that. That being like Game Informer and GameSpot gave it a 9 out of 10, which is really good, obviously, for The Division 2. So, I don't believe that the sales were quite as good as the first game, but um, that there were, you know, obviously it didn't uh, it, it didn't meet Ubisoft's expectations as far as sales are concerned, but it still sold a, a quite a, a pretty big number, guys, of, of copies. Let's put it that way. It sold a lot of copies, so you would think to yourself that there probably will be a Division 3. So, will we see it, and I guess when will we see it? Most likely, we're going to see it, guys, at some point. But I think that what they need to do at Ubisoft is kind of take their time, in my opinion. When we talk about these franchises that, you know, like Ubisoft, they, when they find a really good, you know, franchise to, to work on, and they find success there, or significant success, they have a tendency to start making way too many games too quickly, like Assassin's Creed, for example, making just so many games, uh, a game every single year, treating it like it was a Call of Duty, and it's not Call of Duty, obviously, and so Assassin's Creed actually started really struggling to a lot of the casual fans of the fan base. Well, you don't want that to happen with The Division, and so I think what needs to happen is they need to work on a Splinter Cell title next. They need to bring out, you know, Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine. I would love to, you know, obviously the next Assassin's Creed. I'm excited to see what the, where, where they go with that franchise as well, 
but take your time with the Division 3. I think that we're going to see another Division game, and for those of you who are huge fans of the franchise, I don't think you need to worry about not seeing this game return at some point. I think Ubisoft does need to take their time, though. Really start, you know, because you don't want this game and this franchise to start getting stale. The one thing that I've kind of thought to myself, guys, that has kind of held back the Division games up to this point is that it's pretty much only a multiplayer experience. There's no single player experience and it's, uh, you know, and I think that that kind of hurts the title a little bit. I always thought that this really seemed like a game that could be primed for a, a really fun story campaign. And even, you know, of course, like co-op modes and, you know, multiplayer modes, of course, as well. But I think, like, this really was a franchise that I feel deserves a story mode and it never got that. So I'd like to see them maybe kind of take an approach in the third game to kind of start adding a story to it. Even if it's just like operator missions or something, adding more to it that we can kind of connect with the franchise continuously. Look, I, I think The Division... The first game did really well, and it, it blew expectations, and a lot of people really thought it, it was really a cool concept. The second game, I think it was it was really hyped, but it was almost a little bit overhyped, and then the sales weren't as good, and, and the reviews were, in my opinion, the reviews were really good for this game, um, but it just didn't sell as well as they, you know, Ubisoft thought it was going to. So I think right now they're going to kind of take a step back. They're going to work on expansions for the division too. They should do that. I think they need to continue bringing out expansions for for this game. So there's more and more content for us to be able to to play and enjoy throughout the course of the Division Two's lifespan. And then the Division Three should not even be a thought you know, for the developers, at least for a few years, in my opinion. I think they need to bring out some other games, give the division a little bit of a rest for a moment, because if you start oversaturating or you're just trying to pump out way too many of these games, uh, it's going to, number one, it kind of divides the fan base between different games. And then on top of that, it's just, there's oversaturation. And this is a game that kind of has taken things from like, you know, Watch Dogs, or it's taken things from, Assassin's Creed or Rainbow Six or, you know, a lot of these games that are Ubisoft titles have kind of taken things from one another. And there's nothing wrong with that because these are great games, but I think that they just want, I just feel like there needs to be a a, a space here between the Division 2 and the Division 3. And uh, I would say maybe even more so of a, of a gap than between the first one and the second one, in my opinion. Uh, so that they can work on other stuff, but they also can really come out with some really fresh ideas for the Division 3 that could really progress the franchise further. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this, though, guys. Um, I know it's very premature to be talking about the Division 3 at this point, but with the... Uh, failed, you know, success, even though it's not a failure, obviously, by any stretch, but to Ubisoft, it didn't, it, it was failed expectation in their eyes. Do you think we'll see a, the Division 3? And if we do see it, which I think all of you should be, you know, should be feeling confident that we will see the Division 3 at some point or another, when do you want to see it? Would you rather see it, you know, pretty far down the road, or would you rather see it relatively sooner rather than later because you either don't like the Division 2 or you want to see a continuation sooner rather than later. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And for more The Division 3 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Do you guys remember a franchise called Twisted Metal? Guys, this was a franchise that was absolutely awesome on the PlayStation 2 and it, it spans back to 1995 and that's when this franchise first started and all of a sudden guys we kind of saw this franchise pretty much just die out out of nowhere and there was talks that there were that this franchise was going to continue at one point or another and so in this segment of the show guys I want to talk about what happened to Twisted Metal and is this a franchise that we will ever see return in the foreseeable future so let's talk about it like I said guys really what we have to in order for us to kind of predict the future, we got to look at the past. And like I said, Twisted Metal came out in 1995, and actually it came out on the PlayStation and PC. Now this, guys, was a PlayStation exclusive from pretty much the very beginning. Now I never got into, Twi I didn't get into Twisted Metal until it was on the PlayStation 2, so that's kind of like when I remember uh, this franchise. I wasn't even really playing video games back in 1995, but... 
That being said, we had Twisted Metal in 1995 and then Twisted Metal 2 in 96, Twisted Metal 3 in 98, and then 4 in 1999. So you had like pretty much a back-to-back -back years, uh, uh, you know, so for the, that's, those stretch of those four games, guys, um, you had pretty much games almost every single year. Twisted Metal Black came out in 2001, followed by Twisted Metal Head On in 2005. And then a few years after that, you had Twisted Metal Head On Extra Twisted Edition in 2008. And then our very last addition to the franchise, not considering, you know, the spinoff games and canceled games at this point, we had Twisted Metal in 2012, which was kind of like a, a resurgence, right? And from that point onwards, we never really saw anything, guys, at that point. Now, we did have some spin-offs. We had Twisted Metal uh, Small Brawl, which came out in 2001, Twisted Metal Black Online in 2002, and then the games that got canceled, uh, which we had three of those. So, so three Twisted Metal cancellations. One of those was Twisted Metal Harbor City, which was a sequel to the PlayStation 2 game Twisted Metal Black titled Twisted Metal Harbor City was in development but was canceled before it was announced when the series co-creators left the development team. At time of cancellation, four levels had been completed. These levels were included and playable in Twisted Metal Head-On Extra Twisted Edition as a special mode. And then of course this was followed by Twisted Metal Apocalypse which look guys if the the way you got to look at this is that we only had one game, one of the Twisted Metal games on PlayStation 3. That's all we had, guys. It came out in 2012. And uh, so Twisted Metal Apocalypse was going to be on the PlayStation 3, a Twisted Metal game set in post-apocalyptic environment, which was originally in development in 2008, but was scrapped. Artwork of the canceled game was released by David Jaffe at the San Diego Comic-Con International. It showcased concept arts of locations such as a destroyed Mount Rushmore, as well as a giant crater. It was also revealed that the Eat Sleep Play team was originally rather keen on the idea, though it was hinted by Jaffe that the idea was rejected by Sony Computer Entertainment, speculated to be because of the release of MotorStorm Apocalypse, a racing game which also featured a post-apocalyptic environment. And so that's really unfortunate. I mean, that right there is so unfortunate because Twisted Metal, guys, you would think uh, this would have precedence over uh, MotorStorm, uh, but it didn't. Uh, and then, of course, this followed... Twisted Metal Revolution, guys. So this was the third and final cancellation, uh, canceled game. Apart from Twisted Metal Apocalypse, another Twisted Metal game was in development for the PlayStation 3, which utilized street culture and hip-hop influence. The game was titled Twisted Metal Revolution, but it was canceled. It would have featured characters with a more realistic look, such as a sweet tooth that looked more of a smooth criminal rather than a psychotic clown or a psychopathic clown. Other characters included Yakuza, FBI agents, and street gang members. David Jaffe compared the game to Rockstar's Midnight Club series when describing the look and feel of the game. In addition, Jaffe said that it was extremely difficult to portray the environments that they had created in their concept art within the game as it resulted in an extremely bland environment. So, at the end of the day, guys... I think that there was just development problems. Let's put it that way. I, I really think that there that this team, there were just problems there. And I know that David Jaffe, he was there basically from the beginning, um, but there were just issues uh, with this development team, it seems. Like lots of guys maybe leaving. Um, they were just so on and so forth. It was just they, they couldn't really get what they wanted out of the development team and out of the game that they obviously are canceling them. Or, you know, Sony probably thought that they just weren't good enough maybe. Obviously, if Sony, Sony is going to go ahead and kind of push Twisted Metal Apocalypse to the side and bring out MotorStorm uh, apocalypse out uh, instead of it uh, that that kind of raises some significant red flags now of course that's you know a speculation but according to an IGN article guys written by Shabana Arif David Jaffe studio the Bartlett Jones supernatural detective agency has shut down in the wake of a canceled project Jaffe, who has previously helped create God of War and Twisted Metal, which both made IGN's list of top 100 PlayStation 2 games, tweeted about layoffs at the studio last month after the project it was working on was canceled. 
and he tweeted out saying, wanted y'all to hear it from me before anyone else. We've had a project canceled and have been forced to lay off the vast majority of the Bartlett Jones staff gaming division. More news to come, but for now, that's what's up. Hearts breaking for the amazingly talented crew that's out of work. So, uh, this is pretty much the, that, that was probably like the last draw, guys. I mean, the question is, is will we ever see, you know, Twisted Metal return? Uh, I, you know, at this point, it's hard to say if we would ever see it return. I don't think that it's necessarily completely something that definitely wouldn't happen because I believe Sony still owns those rights. So they would maybe just have a different developer work on it. I think that it is, it's ridiculous. It's crazy to me that Twisted Metal has not continued. I think it's definitely a franchise that deserves to coexist in, in gaming at this point. And I think people would love it on the next gen consoles, but that's just me. And it just seems like they've had a lot of these games canceled. And at the end of the day, guys, you can only do that so long before Sony or whoever that publisher is is going to pull the plug completely from under you. Joffe confirmed the studio's subsequent closure to GamesBeat saying, yeah, it's all true. I'm afraid just the nature of the beast. We had a cool game co going with a publisher and as that game is no longer happening and since all of our funding came from publishers, we just couldn't keep the place going. It was a fantastic ride, however. I so loved our team and loved working with that crew and remain crazy proud of what we created with uh, Drawn to Death. Excited to see where we all land after what has been one of the very best working experiences of my career thus far. So obviously guys, they weren't, they might not have been working on another Twisted Metal game. They might have been working on something else, but it's just the fact of the matter that it shut down and they had to close their doors. And that just kind of, it, it's really sad, number one, because people are losing their jobs and that's a horrible thing. But it's also that we might not see Twisted Metal now. Um, we might not see a continuation of it unless Sony decides, or whoever really owns the rights at this point, decide to let someone else have a, have a chance. Um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, I... I have my doubts about that somebody else would, would get the, you know, they would give the rights to someone else. Maybe they would. I mean, it, it happens all the time in gaming, but I believe that this is a franchise that deserves to coexist with gaming. Like I said, guys, I mean, without a doubt, I mean, come on, like, let's be real. This is a, a, a franchise that was a lot of fun. I think people had uh, a ton of fun playing this franchise. And I think that it would be popular to this day. Um, if they were, you know, if they were to continue with updated graphics and on the next gen consoles, I think it could be something really special, but Ultimately, guys, this is another one of those franchises. This is a franchise that's definitely in a limbo state or it's, you know, on the back burner at this point for Sony. It's up to us as a community. If you really want this game to come out, if you're a huge Twisted Metal fan, you got to voice your opinion to the developer, not so much the developer, but more the publisher, that being Sony, stating that you want a Twisted Metal game made. And guys, movements are really what help make games come out. They, really with many different franchises, guys, a lot of times developers will want to make games or continuations to their franchises, but it really comes down to what the fan base wants. If the fan base doesn't want another game in the franchise, they very well might not do it uh, unless it was incredibly successful. So Twisted Metal is one of those games that might be a niche game at this point in time. And so they're just probably waiting for people, enough people to say, hey, let's make a Twisted Metal game. And then that gets developers talking the rights go to a developer, and then there you go. You're, you're off to the races, essentially. So I think, guys, that that's a, a really important thing when it comes to any type of getting a, a, a franchise rebooted or, you know, a franchise uh, continued is really us as a community have to come together and tell that to the publishers and the developers. But let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think happened to Twisted Metal? I mean, you guys heard from me what I think. I think it was a number of cancellations on top of the closing of, uh, you know, the Bartlett Jones, um, you know, uh, studios. And uh, it's really, you know, unfortunate that those things happened, that it, that all these games got canceled. I just think there were development problems, guys, with some of these games. There were issues within the, the studio itself. And it's really unfortunate, but that's just, you know, sometimes what happens with gaming. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And for more Twisted Metal content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of the 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive, and as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one.
Peace.